uh, welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory. And before we begin, before we do anything, I want to just ask you, if you want to, go to bit.ly slash group of guys to download the uh, stuff we'll be drawing from today. If you want to get, if you want to do it in advance, you can do it and print it out. Got a couple minutes to do that. Um, it's a bunch of JPEGs. There's one of them that's called Dudes, and Dudes is what we'll be drawing from, but you have the others in case you want to draw from them as well or instead or whatever. Meanwhile, if you're so tired, maybe you should leave. Exit, stage left. Good, excellent. So, bit.ly group of guys. That is your reference image. And I see Alexis has put it down there too. That's great, excellent, good. So, it's been uh, exciting to see all of those squids. I never thought I'd be that excited to see squids, particularly that many of them at the same time. Um, but we had, I don't know, it's like 40 or 50 squids showed up on social media um, after we drew them last week. The theme was ink, and it will continue to be ink because, you know, ink is awesome. And drawing without ink, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know, morning without sunshine, coffee, sketchbook school. So, yes, we're going to continue working in ink today. I'm going to be using an ink brush, Pentel Arts ink brush. I'm a big fan of this particular thing. Um, but, you know, you could use, you could probably use just a regular old pen if you wanted to. Up to you, really. We're going to be playing around. We'll be having some fun. As you saw, lots of great interpretations of this particular exercise, all done differently depending on the media that people were using. So, you know, whatever you want to, however you want to express yourself, you can do it. So thank you all. I see people are flooding in from around the world. And uh, that's so great. And I'm not the only squid enthusiast. Here's Karen Moore. She likes them too. Marilyn in New York. New York has, was hit by a big storm this week and uh, lots of snow. I've been getting pictures from uh, my family and friends back there. Meanwhile, I've been working on my tan. I think it was in the mid-70s yesterday. It's going to continue that way for much of the rest of the week. So that's pretty cool. And um, hello to everybody. Hi, Mary Kay and um, Penny from South Africa. That's very nice. It's so nice to see you all. So um, let us see. What are we going to talk about today? Well, I did want to talk about... Um, I just want to mention again, Drawing with a Brush. So Drawing with a Brush is our next workshop. And I bring it up to you, not to harangue you about it, but to remind you that it's going to happen in what would seem to be quite a long time from now, February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day and my sister's birthday. Um, but the fact is, if you want to do Drawing with a Brush with Chris Kaler, and I have no idea why you wouldn't want to, because it's going to be incredible and you're going to learn skills that will impact your drawing for a long time to come. But um, this workshop, you, you need a couple supplies, not expensive supplies, but you, you, you do need to get a couple of um, brushes and brush pens. And, you know, you might have them lying around, but just in case, you might want to order them in advance. So I would sign up now um, so you can get your supply list and you can make sure that you are all set. There's also a little bit of preparation that Chris has you do and you just want to do that in advance so you're not rushing. Um, so you have a week. So I would get into it now. I think it's going to be a really fun workshop and um, you should do it. What else? Um, oh, yes. I want to remind you texting. So I've been texting people. I've been sending them drawings. I've been doing ideas, reminders. Reminders are kind of a big thing because we all want to be reminded to draw. We need to be. A lot of times you go, oh, what did I do today? It seems like a completely wasted day. Why? I forgot to draw. So ideally, we develop a drawing habit, which means, you know, we carry our sketchbooks around with us all the time, or we draw, make art before breakfast. Um, we draw, you know, at certain times, perhaps. We make appointments with ourselves and put it in our calendars. But we do need reminding sometimes. We also need reminding because we have a voice in our head, and that voice is always telling us 
that we shouldn't make art, that it's too hard, that we're not good enough, that it's a waste of time, whatever it is. And having a schedule, having reminders from outside often help to combat that voice and to keep you drawing and keeping the more you draw, the more you'll enjoy it, the better you'll get at it. So you definitely want to do that. So anyway, that's one of the reasons that I text with people, people in America, i.e. the United States and Canada only for now. Um, but, but I also send all kinds of goofy things and I have discussions and you can text me back and I'll text you. And it's all very nice. So, um, another thing is tomorrow I'm going to be sending out my email essay. I write one every week and, uh, this one is actually quite involved. I've been thinking about it for a fair amount of time. Um, so I'm ready to send it out. And this one is, uh, I just email it to you. It doesn't cost you nothing. And it goes to every corner of the earth that has computers. So go to bit.ly slash Danny's essays. Tell me where you want me to send it. And I'll send you one tomorrow. If you miss it, if you take time, if you're watching this as a, as a repeat or you're watching the recording of this, that's cool too. I'll send you one the following week. I do it every Friday. So one of the things that I do, one of the things that you could do for me and kind of for yourself is to subscribe to this channel. When you subscribe to sketchbookschool.com, uh, it just reminds you again to come back, to come back to Sketchbook School, to come back to Draw With Me. And uh, if you click that little bell after you subscribed, as you can see in, in this, what the hell is this thing? No, it's not there. It's, it's, I can never do this right. Anyway, this thing here, as you can see, when you click the bell, it notifies you when there's a new thing from Sketchbook School. So, you yeah, know, you can ignore it, but you can also be reminded of it. So that's also nice. So anyway, uh, there's that. Okay. So here's what I've been thinking about. I've been thinking about one of the things that I like drawing is sort of complicated things, you know, like um, a piece of machinery or even a piece of toast, something that has like lots of elements to it, but that is, um, allows you to kind of get into the flow of drawing, to get into that zone by, you know, working on little bits. So you work on a little piece, you choose a little piece of the drawing and then you work on what's above it and what's to the left of it and what's below and what's the right of it. And then you kind of work your way out and eventually you've drawn the whole thing and you can kind of astound yourself. Like I couldn't believe that I drew this super complicated thing, but actually when you look at all the bits, the bits themselves weren't that difficult. It was just, there's a lot of them. It's like doing a, a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle instead of something simpler. So I like that idea. I also want to draw some people. Um, but I don't want to get involved and overly burdened by likeness. Likeness is a big thing that we wrestle with. So today we're going to draw a group, group of guys. That's what I'm calling this one group of guys, just a bunch of guys. I don't know. I don't think you'll know who they are. I don't really know who they are. This is a picture I found on the internet. I like to look around and find like sort of vaguely interesting pictures, throw them in a folder. Then when the time comes, I look for, um, pull them out and pick one and draw it. Um, you know, a topic that I like to search on Google search is vintage portraits or vint yeah, vintage portraits, vintage photos. I think it's a misuse of the word vintage, vintage. Are they really vintage? They're old, they're archival, they're whatever. Anyway, that seems to be the common word vintage. So you choose vintage and then you can choose vintage monkey photos or vintage schnauzers or vintage cars, whatever it is. But it's to me interesting. It's like they're inherently interesting pictures. So, um, yes, is anybody having a problem? I see that Cynthia is having a problem getting this reference. Okay. I just put it on. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think some people are able to get it somewhere. It's, it's just on a Google drive. If for some reason you can't find it, I'm going to put it up on the screen. You'll be able to see it in a second. In fact, here it is. And here I am with my group of guys. <laughs> I love this group of guys. Um, I don't know who they are, honestly. I think they are potentially uh, some sort of 70s band. They're just really varied. Um, let, me, let me show you the last guy. You know, he's 
kind of my, like my my soul brother, don't you think? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, oh, somebody somebody knows who they are, of course. Yes, Patrick Fultz. What do you say, Patrick? Patrick says. Um, all right, I'm not sure what he's asking about, but Patrick seems to recognize who these people are. Anyway, um, so great. So some of you are able to download it. If you're not, we've got it. So it'll be here up on the screen. We can draw from it. So yeah, four guys, you know, and I just want to say to, to you, don't worry about, you know, capturing them perfectly. I think they are each individuals, right? They're each individuals. So we can capture some of the things that make them individuals. And that will be a fun drawing to do. So um, let's get to it. We have, uh, how much time do we have? Um, we have quite some time. It's only 10, it's only 12 past. So let's go on, get on with it. Okay. So let me make this a little bit bigger. And again, if you missed the URL, there it is, bit.ly slash group of guys. I think it's HTTP for those of you who don't know. Um, all right. So Patrick seems to think that, yes, that uh, they do look like a bass. Yeah, he, I, I think it is. It is a band, right? Who's the lead singer? Pretty obvious, right? Who's the guitarist? Not so sure. What do you think? Bass player? I mean, what if, who's the drummer? I don't know. <laughs> let's think about that as we start to draw them. Um, and uh, let's just get into it. Here we go. So again, if you can't, if you can't for some reason download it, fret not. Just work from this reference on the screen. And uh, I'm just going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, just draw an outline contour of them to just kind of, I don't know, make it easier, get some placement. It's going to be kind of perhaps a bit ugly, but that's all right. Um, just want to move quickly. It made him a bit of a pinhead. That's okay. Um, make him a bit of a wedge head to compensate for it. Uh, these are all technical terms. Uh, whoops, you can't even see what I'm doing. So there we go. It's a battle to make the reference big enough. Or, uh, or not. Okay. So this is this is just sort of a general contour of them, and now I want to just kind of get into drawing them. He has a nice schnoz. He's got this sort of nice hair that's slicked back in this very, very sexy way. Got a nice kind of dimple there. Let's give him some side eye. And uh, yeah. So I'm just, I'm working quickly because I'm going to probably have some fun later on, just kind of, um, just kind of working. Oh, I has got to get those sideburns. Yeah. Just, I'm going to probably spend some time just adding details and um, textures and shading and stuff like that later. You know, I want to, I want to have kind of a basis to play almost and got to get this big collar, got to get the big collar. Um, If you were getting seasick, there we go. Um, let's get those fingers in there. Again, we don't have to worry about the likeness because no, these guys are never going to see it. They're not going to be like, oh my God, somebody discovered us on the internet and, and now they're, they're all drawing us. Oh my God. Unlikely. Unless you're a big fan of whoever these guys are and you want to tell them that, uh, yeah, they're the subject of draw with me. That might bring them, might revive their careers. You never know, right? Suddenly, 
they make a huge comeback. Just in time for when people can go to live concerts again. What are we going to call these guys? Well, this is the group of guys. This guy is... You know another thing? I'm also... I don't really care how much it looks like him because I'm kind of using him as just a foundation for drawing a guy, drawing a group of guys and getting him, you know, down there. That's the nice thing about using sort of obscure reference is you can just say, well, I'm just going to use that um, to inspire some sort of exercise in drawing. That's the whole point of this thing. We're going to draw this guy. What is he? You think he's, is he like the main guy? Maybe he's the main guy. Maybe he's the main guy. He's the guy who started the band. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to be the lead singer. And uh, the guy with the long hair is going to have to stay back there on the drums. Who knows? What's your theory about them? This guy looks a bit, well, I was going to say he looks a bit older, but now I realize he doesn't. They're actually all kind of older. They're all, they're not spring chickens. This is not their first band, let's put it that way. So I'm going to work with that, and I'm going to help him to look even worse and older. <laughs> Did somebody else find the picture? They found the original source? Good, excellent. One thing I want to tell you, don't draw teeth. That's just my recommendation. When you draw teeth, individual teeth, you usually end up regretting it. The person looks really gap-toothed and unpleasant. So forget the teeth. Just draw the general, the, the whole tooth structure and leave it at that. It doesn't quite capture his expression, but that's okay. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to have fun. So were, this, were these guys a cover band? Or do they write originals? What kind of music do they make? Maybe we need to make a playlist for them. What do we think? I like that they have that they have um, sort of uniforms, right? They're all wearing the same thing, but it's not it's not very good. Whatever it is, it's sort of like cheap looking, like like somebody's girlfriend made them these waistcoats. So yeah, all right. And uh, this guy looks like he uh, might have a couple of tattoos, but sort of seventies tattoos, you know, not cool modern hipster tattoos or whatever they are, but uh, more, you know, ones he got in the Marines. All right, so one of the th things about doing this exercise is to remember we're trying to kind of break complexity down into its elements. So that's why we want to do something that has, you know, 
so many people that we can't really deal with them as individuals and we're working really quickly like we want to finish this whole thing in the next you know five ten minutes like we're not we're not settling in to to draw something really complicated we just uh, um Right. So, um, what else can we be right? Oh, this guy has, has a bit of the hairy chest there. So that's kind of key. And he seems to have some sort of an amulet there, which I would hope so, because this is the seventies. Um, the other guys aren't quite that hip. So it's just the, like the cool. So what are we going to decide that this guy, like in a way they remind me of, um, cheap Trick. They have sort of Cheap Trick vibe, right? Except Cheap Trick has like two good looking guys and two goofy looking guys. And this band, I don't know. I'm not sure what they have in that department. I don't, I'm not laughing at them. I really, I'm not. Because they seem to really be self possessed. They seem to really be, you know, into it. And that's cool. That's good. So, yeah. All right. So, um, I'm going to stop with the brush pen now, and I'm just going to get into something, something like, what is this, an 05? Okay, so I'll try using an 05 here. Maybe. I'm, I may come to regret this. I'm already starting to regret it. I'm thinking that, you know what I want to do, and I may regret this too. But regret is part of life. So what I'm thinking I might do is I might get into some Sumi ink painting. It's a little random, but then and then I'll come back and do some water on top of that. Let me just get that. So I have this Sumi ink thing here, and uh, just wet wetting my brush, and I want to just sort of. Keep it nice and diluted, and um, the thing about Sumi ink is it generally tends to be lighter once it's drying, so so let's not fret that right now it looks a little intense because it won't be. In a second. But I want to, I think one of the fun things about doing this sort of more complex drawing where you're drawing quickly is to is to work on some layers. So I'm going to put down like just some layers of tone and then later on if I want to I can go back in and just um, you know add lines line work that will make it just be a bit more varied. But This is also one of these drawings where you say to yourself, the approach that I make is to some extent going to be dictated by the amount of time that I want to spend on this. So, you know, if I wanted to spend a lot of time on this and really do detailed drawings of all of them and really try and capture a likeness, you know, maybe I would use different media. Maybe I would, you know, or maybe I would Maybe I would, certainly I would slow down. Obviously I would slow down. But, um, but I don't want to spend an awful lot of time on this. I just want to kind of fool around and investigate them a bit. So as a result, I'm moving quickly. That's fine. Um, You know, because do I need to have a really good drawing of these guys? I certainly do. 
no, what I meant to say was, was um, you know, these guys are sort of, they're a little cartoony. So let's approach them in a kind of cartoony way. Um, if we wanted to, we could approach them in a much more serious way. And what would that be like? Might not be that interesting because, because um, we want to kind of emphasize the slightly goofy nature of them. So I like sort of doing things a little more cartoony. Jen points out that this guy looks like Anthony Quinn. It's true. It's true. He has... Uh, they're, they're all very kind of different types, I think. Very different types. I wonder how they came to become banned. What's their story? Where do they meet? Do they work together? Are they all employees in the same hotel? Did they... I put an ad in the local dry cleaner or the, the laundromat up on the bulletin board. Looking to form a band. Must be into eagles. Um, Jose Feliciano. Must know how to play House of the Rising Sun. Group of guys. Yeah. It's kind of them. Or it's my version of them. Gotta get that gold ring. He has that nice ring in there. Um, they have patterns on their shirts, but I'm afraid that that would be kind of distracting. But maybe I could do it. Maybe now's the time to start um, working on a whole other level, like being, doing much finer stuff. You know, I could just draw sort of silly polka dots. You know, there's a certain like uh, Elvis in Vegas quality when you put these little spangles on them. I think these guys might cover Elvis. Do you think that they have like arguments about whether they're doing authentic enough material? Are they selling out by playing Elvis? Um, do they do the Beatles? I hope not. But they probably do. What Beatles song do they do? Do they rock, you think? Or are they more sort of, uh, you know, background music? Their, their real estate team. Come on, Laura. That's what Laura says. We're wrong. They're a real estate team. I refuse to believe that. There's no way. There's no way. Why are they wearing you? Why are they wearing matching outfits? That's terrible. Come on, realist. No, no, no. These guys are the next big band out of, I don't know, 
Morgan Columbus, maybe? There's no way. Real estate? Come on. That's just depressing. Virginia says, waiters at the same restaurant, possibly. But Virginia says, this is a case of process being more important than product. Well, I'll take that. As it turns out, that's the case. <laughs> but yes, of course. Again, I mean, this is, this is having fun. And that's what drawing is meant to be. It's not meant to be painful or humiliating. Like, unfortunately, like this band's music might be. All right, say they are a real estate team. I'm really struggling with that idea. I would rather that they were waiters, honestly. I would rather they were the staff of like a, of like a fish restaurant than real estate guys, really? Like, would you buy real estate from this guy? What kind of real estate? No. No. No, I refuse to accept it. Anyway. <laughs> Yes. I missed a sleeve, did I? Who's oh yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's very helpful. All right. Bunch of guys. Look at it in all its glory. I'm gonna close this picture now. We can enjoy this in all of its splendor. God, what a masterpiece. JJ, get the framing shop on the line. Gotta hang this over the dining table. Sid and Marty Croft. Kind of, I get that. Laura wonders if they coordinate dance moves while they sing. Yeah, I can totally see them like spinning. You know, maybe they do the occasional Earth, Wind, and Fire cover. But this is again the 70s, so probably not. But uh, yeah, that's good. The guy in the center closes his eyes when he sings. This guy? Is he the singer? Have we decided that he's the singer? My version of him is older and more sinister. Whereas the original guy is very cheery and nice. They're all cheerier and nicer. I've made them all seem a little bit, a little bit darker. It's okay. That's how I like my music. They play for high school reunions. Quite true, Karen. I could see them now welcoming the class of 74. The uh, under the sea. What, maybe, um, why, why are they dressed like this then? Maybe it's like a Grecian. Uh, what are some of the th themes that um, proms would have? I never really had a prom, so I'm not sure, but yeah. White gospel. Genius. Yes. White gospel. I didn't know the white gospel was actually a genre, but yes, gospel. Okay. And uh, what else? Claire says a banjo, guitar, bass, and tambourine. Hmm, tambourine. Hard to picture. Well, listen, uh, polka band, no, I'm not. This is the 70s, so. There's no way this guy was in a polka band in the 70s. No way. No way. The guy in the front sticks his finger in his ear to hear his pitch. True. Do you think that um, like these two guys share a mic? Or these two guys, they share a mic together? To sing a bit of harmony together? Could be. Yeah. So, a lot of great options. The photos from 1983. Honestly, JJ... I don't, I can't, I'm, no. You know what? Sometimes, sometimes, in fact, most of the time, fantasy is better than reality. So, I'm telling you, these guys are 70s, I was going to say yacht rock, but yacht rock didn't really exist in the 70s, not prog rock. You know, were they doing like three dog night covers? Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Could be. Yep. So, um, if you've somehow managed to get into that folder that I sent you, there's some other cool pictures in there. 
There are a couple of ones that maybe you will draw later on. Uh, we're going to have the um, the after party, and we'll talk about those. But, uh, you know, I think that there were some cool ones. Let me just see if I can pull up a couple of the others, because there were some other ones that we thought would be cool. This is an interesting one. So this one, I saw a lot. You know where I discovered this picture being used a surprisingly amount, a surprising amount? Men's groups in churches use this picture as they're like, how to form a men's group with your brethren. Um, you know, getting together to discuss uh, Christian issues. This is a picture of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and the, their gang, the Hole in the Wall gang. Seems like an odd choice, right? But again, sort of an interesting picture, complex sort of shape, you know, little faces, but kind of cool with bowler hats. So that would be a fun thing f for some people to draw if you wanted to get into that. Um, oh, this one. I love this one. Look at this. These are like South, I think the South African ladies, again in the 60s. Really nice. I mean, great, great tones, great costumes. I like the looks on their faces. Great handbags. Yeah. So, I like those ladies. They're in that in that folder. Um, oh yeah, this is a good one. We might have to draw this guy at some point in the future. Check him out. I mean, that's a bro, right? That is um, probably eighteen eighties, I would say. Definitely good looking guy, and he knows it. Um, and then, oh yeah, this guy, also really good. I mean, this guy's actually really excellent. This guy's so good that if you drew him, it would seem like you'd made him up. I mean, look. Look at the mustache. Look at the part in the hair. And look at the bow tie. In fact, there's a line that goes from the top of his head, straight down the bridge of his nose, through his mustache, down his collar, and all the way to that button. That's a remarkable guy. I think he's really good. So, yeah, I have to try and draw him later on. Because, I mean, that's that guy's for real. Oh, and then this one, yeah. This one I thought was sort of interesting, kind of complicated, you know, a bit more of a challenge. But these are um, like a group of soldiers in the South Pacific, World War II. Again, great, great body shapes. I like that this guy is sort of forming a swastika with his body. Maybe, I, maybe that's just me. Um, but yeah, lots of like great gestures. I like the energy of the different faces coming in. It's got a lot of good energy. So that could be really fun. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, Claire says it was considered crude for men to pose for a photo with their hands in their pockets. Yeah, because you never know what they're doing down there. It's true. Men are beasts. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> and then we'll give Joey the final word. It's true. So that was fun. I enjoyed that. Um, I would love to see your group of guys. So please hashtag them. Put them out there on social media. Facebook, Instagram. I don't know. What are some of the other places you could put it? As long as you hashtag SBS Draw with me, we'll track it down. And if you're in the schoolyard, which I hope you are, put it there. No need for hashtags there. So, um, yeah, put it up there. And then next week when we start the show, we'll start off with our groups of groups of guys. That'll be fun. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for being here um, to draw with me. And I hope that you uh, will continue to work on this drawing. Download the image, or, or if you want to, just like rewind this video and look at the picture there. Um, if you, for some reason, can't be bothered. And uh, where is the file? Polly Barbacovi. Are you serious? The URL has been up there the entire time. It's also, you also find it in the list of the thing about below. So, um, but if you insist... I will share it with you again. Here you go. Bitly slash group of guys. Look for the file called dudes. That's the one we drew today. 
dudes. Maybe I should have called it band. Um, but anyway, that's where you can find today's reference. Thank you. Enjoy it. It was great hanging out with you. I love all your comments, and I love that you show up to draw with me. Let's do it again next Thursday, um, right here at 9 a.m. Pacific. And I have to say that it's no longer noon Eastern. It's 9 a.m. Pacific. So, And for those of you who um, car car, I do read your comments. I read them. I enjoy them. You're a masterful poet full of incredibly interesting things to say, and I'm really glad that you shared them with me. Um, but uh, what I would also say is if you're a member of Spark, I look forward to seeing you in the after party because we're going to get into this. We're going to probably do some of these other drawings. It'll be really fun. And I'll see you there oh, in uh, 18 minutes. Thanks for joining me. See you later. Bye-bye.